Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller here. I've got a couple of great stories from the 2022 Reality Creation Course in Orlando that I'd love to share with you. You know, there were so many, so many stories. I mean, 50 people from all over the world. But these two stories jumped out, and I just had enough time to capture them. And I wanted you to hear about these massive transformations. So one is from a young wife and mom who could have gone down the road of divorce, as you will hear. But instead, she turned it around. How? By entering a parallel universe regarding her husband. And that saved her marriage in this reality. Then the next story that almost has elements of Fred's own early childhood story, a young lady who at the age of 10 was on multiple medications for ADHD and depression, and then how she turned all of that around in her teenage years so that at 18, she was the youngest participant this weekend with a powerful life ahead of her. So we're going to hear both of these stories, and hopefully they encourage you of ways that you can change things in your own life. So first, this is Addie from Houston with her story of how a parallel universe saved her marriage. Wow, you have an incredible story of something. Well, a couple of things. Let's go back because you told a story about something that happened here in the hotel. Oh, yes. The, right? the first night, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, in my hotel room, there the restroom has a sliding door um, instead of one that opens out and in. And um, kind of uh, like a pocket door. Yes. Yeah. yeah kind of like a pocket door. Um, did my night routine. Went to sleep. And in the middle of the night, I got up to use the restroom. And I was walking into the restroom. I almost ran into the door. It was closed. <laughs> and I, I just stopped for a second. I was thinking, did I close this door? Uh, no, I said, I have no reason to close the door. I haven't closed it since I've been here, except for when I took a shower. So I opened it, and then I tried to kind of slide it closed to see if maybe it just slid on its own, like maybe it's, you know, there's not a lot of resistance. No, there's a lot of resistance. You have to use some umph to get it to close. So um, used the restroom, went back to sleep, and the next day woke up, and I'm still puzzled now. And in fact, last night when I went to sleep, I made sure I knew where everything was. Um, I even put a backpack against the door in the, uh, connects to the room next to me. I'm like, did somebody come in in the middle of the night? And I didn't know it. Um, but I, I have no logical explanation wow. for how that happened. We're staying in a haunted hotel here for the Reality Creation Seminar. I, and I heard somebody <laughs> mentioned that the other day. They mentioned something about haunted, and but I didn't explore it further because I didn't want to know anything. I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't need to know. Well, so that'll <laughs> stay in know. the space. <laughs> you know, she asked me about this, uh, yesterday and just one of the thoughts that came to my mind was metaphorically, because it happened kind of in that dream state, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you yes. weren't dreaming, right. but you were, you, you were in between that maybe, uh, there might be, it's showing you that there's a block of some sort. Mm -hmm. And actually, you kind of told the story because maybe that even parlays into the parallel universes story that you've told today. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> what was that about? Well, my I'm married with the two young children. They're four and five. And a while back, um, I, I guess about a year, year and a half ago, I was reading parallel universes of self. In my my personal life, I was just extremely, just I felt a bit hopeless with my marriage with my husband. I mean, nothing was right. I'll just, yeah, leave it at that. Nothing was right. And so it occurred to me, though, and I kept thinking, you know, there's just someone else out there who gets me. You know, there's a perfect person. My soulmate is out there. And um, so in my mind, I started going down all of these awfulizing paths, like, okay, we're going to get divorced, and the kids are going to, you know, have to grow up with, you know, two separate households, and just everything that comes along with that lifestyle. Dark thoughts. Yeah, just really dark thoughts. And it occurred to me that it wasn't a part, there wasn't a person, a specific person out there that I was looking for. It was the feeling that I needed from that person, whoever that person was. What gave you that idea, a feeling? That I needed a feeling. Versus somebody, Versus somebody. to be a certain way, right? Um, 
I heard someone share that just in manifesting a life partner, and I thought, well, why can't I do that with my existing partner? You know, wouldn't it be easier to try to step on or hop onto a parallel reality or onto a timeline that where that my existing husband or my husband in that as that person exists. Mm. So I started um, visualizing my husband as that person, someone who is respectful, someone who is thoughtful, considerate, who helped with the kids. And there was more um, even division of duty with helping with the children. Um, And I didn't imagine him as if he were that way. I imagined him being that way in the present now. This is the way he is. Were you feeling that too? Absolutely. Yes. So you were feeling it and seeing it. Yes. The combination. Yes. Yeah. Both. Yes. The, yeah. There was high emotion with it mm. in, that, in that feeling. And I, I couldn't believe it, but within days, our... <laughs> Say that again. Within, within days. Days. <laughs> the dynamic in our relationship started shifting. And this was nothing that I, you know, gave him a heads up about, look, this is what I'm doing. You know, this is what I expect. I mean, that wouldn't have worked anyway. I probably would have gone the opposite direction. But um, yeah, it was it was truly amazing. Like, you know, we we've had this pattern in our marriage for you know ten, eleven years of being a certain way, and it changes within a few days. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that I was perfect. I'm sure that I contributed a lot in the way he was behaving. You know, um, I was um, probably projecting. Uh, he was probably in many ways responding to my energy, you know, what, um, so I wasn't like mm-hmm. an angel in this entire scenario, mm-hmm. but I knew that in order for him to be the person that I needed to be fulfilled emotionally, I needed to start tapping into that timeline. How do I do that? I start feeling the feeling of him being that way. I start um, saying in the present, this is who he is. Wow. And where is it today, a year and a half or so later? A year and a half or so later, we are much better than we were. Um, it's a much more respectful, considerate, rela- I mean, exactly what I pictured. Now, I will say there are times where if I mentally or like energetically, if I start going down, say, to like the level three or four area. Back I have to, to the dark ca- thoughts. Back to the dark thoughts. I have to be cautious because... I can easily slip back into that mindset um, of the way he used to be. And I make a conscious effort to redirect those thoughts and those intentions and that feeling to get back to where we were, where he, he was. You know, that dream guy, that husband that I had always wanted. So how else have you used that technique? When I was listening to uh, Fred's book, Parallel Universes of Self, on the commute home, One day, um, there was at a certain point in the book, I hadn't completed it yet, but at a certain point in the book, it clicked that, yes, there are truly infinite realities at this moment of my life. I mean, in the book, Fred talked about, you know, there's a version of you who went to Hollywood, a version who didn't, a version who's rich, poor, neither, both. You know, I mean, like he went through all of these scenarios and there was something about the way he described that that made me realize that there are infinite number of me's out there and in the moment it just it sounded like common sense you know I'm like why did my parents teach me this um so in that moment I started thinking I said well there's a version of me out there who after we got married my husband and I got married remained healthy and stayed active physically and who was fit and who weighs less than I do right now and so I said okay I'm going to jump on to that timeline So I mentally thought that, okay, I'm jumping, I'm gonna step into this timeline vibratorily, I'm just gonna be that person. And then I took a step further and I said to myself, my head, the version of myself that I'm stepping into is married to the version of my husband who also remained on a healthy lifestyle from after we got married. And after that, I, you know, the book continued and I forgot about it, I got home, life continued. A few days later, my husband says, out of the blue, you look like you've lost weight. And I was just like, (laughs) what? Like, I, it was, it was so hard. I just didn't understand it because I hadn't consciously done anything differently. And I was just like, wow. So I was really blown away. And then a couple days later, 
he comes out of the bathroom, which is where the scale is, and he said, I've lost some weight. He's like, I haven't even been trying. And then I was like, oh, my goodness. Now, this, <laughs> this is bizarre. This is a little bit strange. And so I thought, okay, maybe it's coincidence. You know, your, your mind, the logical mind tries to step in and start making, um, you know, logical reasons for why this happened. It's like logical basic as on our physical, what we can see reality. And, um, and then a couple days later, he walks into the kitchen and says, I lost more weight. He said, I, he's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm not even doing anything. And he was really proud of himself, even though he wasn't doing anything to do it. And at that point, I started laughing because it was, I was incredulous. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my goodness, this actually works. And this is my introduction to this entire, I guess, realm of thought, belief, um, philosophy, everything. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was just, yeah, mind blowing for me. And what was especially interesting or what was noteworthy to me about the entire thing, one of the many things that was, was that I'm really grateful that I discovered Fred's literature before other, I guess, champions in the area, other authors who write about reality creation and manifesting. Because um, had I read theirs first, I would think that there has to be this big ceremonious production around you know, creating a reality. Like you must, you, know, you gotta find your Zen spot. You have to be in a quiet space. You have to you know, spend half hour, an hour getting there. And I did it while driving. <laughs> In Houston. In Houston, on no, no less, yes. That's about like saying L.A. or Chicago and, or something, right? It's like, Houston's traffic is no big deal. <laughs> Why are you even mentioning it? It's been horrible for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. So um, it was really amazing. And I remember wanting to, I remember in my mind thinking, gosh, I really wish I could ask Fred, was that possible, or is, are these just coincidences, you know? But well, he's right there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm ask like, him. like, oh, wow, it's the real deal. It's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, see, so, that was his answer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really, really amazing. That's what I love about this story is the simplicity of it. Yeah. You were driving in gnarly traffic, and you just go, okay, I'm going to create a parallel timeline. I'm going to go jump from here to there. Mm -hmm. That's the whole nature of the book. Mm -hmm. is that you can jump track, right? Yes. And you did. Yes. And it worked. It did. And then it worked again. Yes. And what is your next track, next track that you're going to jump, do you think? Mm. Do you have one in mind? I do. It's, uh, hmm. Can you, and you don't have to share it. Yeah, I think it's you one where I'm, you know, sometimes when you share your goal, yeah. it kind of just takes away it. from it. Yeah, just but keep it. But I definitely it. have one you in have mind. One. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. That's so cool. So what is the future of your family, your kids, your life ahead of you with the kinds of things that you've learned this weekend and that oh, wow. at your fingertips? Mm, gosh, one of the things I'm definitely taking back is that, you know, when I originally came here, I was, I was uncertain what I was going to get out of it. But when I arrived here, shortly after I arrived, it became very clear that I'm here to focus on my children and well, my children and, and a few other things. But um, what I'll be taking away is that I want to teach them from at the ages they are now, which is four and five, that they are capable. Um, I want them to know growing I want all of this for them growing up to be second nature. I want them to, for example, the, the hands-on healing. You know, I want to go home and say, um, hey, mommy went to a class this weekend and let's, you know, look what I learned. Look what I could do with my hands, you know, um, and, and just make it fun and engaging for them. And then also teach them that they can create their own realities and with their belief and their thoughts. And just, I really, really want to empower them to just, again, for all of this to be second nature. You know, I had to unlearn everything that I knew and I'm still unlearning. And I would like to be able to use this information, everything that we've gleaned from this conference from the people I've met and take that back and um, apply that in my parenting with them. Now, we had already talked about this, but just to memorialize it for our conversation here is that I had told you a little bit about what's going on in the sky above our heads, and there's some energy there. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, well, you were mentioning the Bible, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God is Psalm 19.1, mm -hmm. and that truly is, and right now, what the heavens are declaring is that kids that are born right now and your kids' age have this little 
extra dose of spiritual juice to the idea that they're going to be the kids that are going to lead us forward. So you're raising little mystics. Yes, <laughs> little light workers. <laughs> little light workers, yes, exactly. Yes. That chapter I narrated in Steve Forrest's book was uh, entitled, When the Saints Come Marching In. <laughs> that is the most perfect title ever. That gave me chills when you mentioned that earlier. It really did. <laughs> so you've got a couple little saints to yeah. raise. Or basically to steer and guide. Just feed yes. them and water them and then get out of their way. Yes, yes. Light the path and let them towards their own yeah. When, dish, when dishes start levitating and everything, you'll know your parenting <laughs> job is done. All right, next. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Thank you so much. Yes, what a great thank story. You, Thanks thank for you. being simple yes. and just getting it. Thank you. Thanks for sharing it with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And now for the rest of the story with Addie, that next thing on her list. Well, Addie let me know that about six hours after we recorded this, that item fulfilled. And it was incredibly significant for her. So I would imagine by now that she's on to the next or the next or the next on her list. Very powerful indeed. Speaking of powerful, now let's meet Siva. Her story kind of reminds me of Fred's. A lot of challenge in early in life. And Fred actually told of this in our very first interview together back in 2013. And then he wrote about it in several of his books. This kind of reminds me of that. And I would predict with some degree of certainty that this young lady has an equally powerful contribution to the world's consciousness ahead of her if she so chooses. So now, with a story of early transformation, turning a life completely around, meet Siva from Oklahoma City. You have quite a story, now that I know the, the full details of it. It's like, this is incredible. All right, tell everybody how old you are. I'm 18 years young. <laughs> <laughs> she is the youngest participant here at the Fred Dodson Reality Creation Seminar 2022 and has probably a story that would beat all of us combined. I mean, this is an incredible story of a journey that has lived a full lifetime by 18. Can you tell me again what life was like for you at the ripe old age of 10? Yeah, <laughs> so every morning, I didn't tell you this part, but every morning, wow, I, I forgot this almost until now. I would drive to school and we would sit out front and I would cry every morning because I didn't want to take my medicine. I know I'm not speaking very clearly. You're fine. <laughs> you are fine. Yeah, I would cry. I would. I would cry every single morning because I didn't want to take that medicine. What medicine? For my ADHD. And, you know, things go on from there, especially when you're messing with your body chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, things move around. It's called the cocktail in medicine. Mm -hmm. It is. In psychiatry, it's called the cocktail. People hmm. know it well. You get on one, and then you have to take another one to offset the side effects of that one. And then you've yeah. got two side effects. So you have to take a third to offset that. And now you've got four side effects. Yeah. And by the time you're on about eight or ten pills, how many, how many were you taking in, the in all? Well, I, I had, you know, my ADD medicine. My ADD medicine that I'm supposed to take if the first one isn't working. The depression medicine and the booster for the depression medicine because I'm maxed out. There you go. And so that was my little thing. And so, yeah, I would, I would go to school every morning, and I would just sit and cry. Um, I think I started taking medication around third, fourth, definitely fifth grade. And it was embarrassing, too, because other people would see me cry mm, <laughs> before school. Mm. They're like, why are you crying every wow. day? And then you said you were in a facility, treatment facility. Yeah, when I was 15. I went to a place in Oklahoma called Cedar Ridge. It's inpatient, and mm. you you kind of stay there until you're well enough to leave. How long were you there? 
I wasn't there too long, maybe about a week. Um, and as soon as you get in there, it's like, oh no, <laughs> what, have, what have I done to get here, you know? Like I was saying, the energy in there and just, I, I'm one of the lucky ones because some of the people in there, they had, they had it tough from the beginning. I mean, stuff I, I could never dream of going through. And it gives you really good pers perspective because those are children. Yeah, exactly. So you're 18 now. You found that there was another way to approach life through a T. Harbecker seminar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, if anybody's been to those, it's kind of a unique experience. Uh, there's a lot of emotion, right? A yeah. Lot of excitement, if yes. you will. A lot of pump you up. And then how did that transition to being in a Fred Dodson seminar in Orlando when you're 18? Man, um, a lot of stuff in between, really. So you get interested in this and you want to hear what everybody says. And that doesn't always take you to the best places. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. I kind of, I accidentally joined a cult for a little bit. <laughs> I oh didn't know my. it was a cult until I realized it's a cult and I'm not in too deep, you know. Um, it's called the metaphysical school, if you've ever heard mm. of anything like it. And yeah, so I, I just do things that are, you know, interesting to me and, and just, I don't know, broadening my horizons with what is in alignment with me. Especially because, like I said, I mean, you know, not everybody out there knows exactly what they're doing. You have to be discerning with, within this space. I guess within any religious really or... Yeah, how did you find Fred? So my dad actually recommended the Levels of Energy book. You have to read this book. It's an amazing book. You'll just love it. And I was like, okay, finally I'm starting to read this book. I read it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a really good book. And then I just... I found out that he's a nut and that I just love that his other books, like the extraterrestrial linguistics, I loved that book. And I couldn't get enough of it. I'm like reading the Pleiades book and I started the, you know, the Antarctica one. And so I'm stalking this guy and I end up on his telegram and he's having a seminar. Okay, we're going. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you brought your parents. Well, I told my, my dad about the seminar. I thought I would have to convince him to come along. I thought I might have to come alone. And um, he was all in from the jump. That is so amazing. All right, you're off the pills. Yeah. You're living consciously. You're responsible for yourself. You're creating your own reality. What made all that shift in such a short period of time? Evaluation being aware of what you're doing and being aware of the of what's going on around you. I mean, if you hang out with people and and bad stuff keeps happening, I mean, that's what it was like for me. Like, bad things just keep happening. I You just can't do it after a while. You know, people come to my house, they steal from me. I go out, I get my phone stolen because I'm, I'm hanging around these type of people. It's just stuff like that over and over again. It just, it gets sick because I've never been in a space where I need to like steal or anything like that. And so just hanging out with people who where bad things just kind of come into the area, it gets old quick. And so you kind of just need to be like, okay, well, why does this keep happening? I mean, it's for, it's for anything, not even just, you know, being stolen from. Why do, why do I keep doing, getting this result? Why do I keep, Ending up here. This has happened twice. That's odd, isn't it? Like, <laughs> you kind of just have to keep an eye out. So I could see where levels of energy made a big difference. Yeah. Because you're reading a book that shows you if you stay down here, you're going to consistently get that. Yeah. And if you live up here, you're going to consistently draw that. The way that levels of energy really changed my life was how I view other people and the spaces. And, and it really gave me a compassion for people because sometimes it's frustrating. Like at my job, we deal with a lot of reactive people. And it's like, these people call and ask literally the stupidest questions. But it's, it's so easy to be like, 
I don't know, just screaming at someone or hanging up the phone. But it's just where people are at. And if you don't have the awareness of people are are at different spaces and this is why and this is how you get out, I mean, you lose that compassion. So with the levels of energy, it was really like, wow. And, and just like he has in the book with how to talk to people. I mean, like, it's okay for an apathetic person to get angry. You know, you don't want to push their anger down and, and stuff like that, you know, how to, how to more easily communicate with people. You don't want to talk intuitively to a willful person and vice versa. Wow, you've really got this down. I try. <laughs> are you seeing it, are you finding it to be true in your own life? Yes. I don't necessarily like go into a room and read the energy or anything, mm -hmm. but I do pay attention to like what the results are that Exactly. Of the, the spaces and, you know, who's showing up to this seminar. You know, that's a big thing. So what have you seen here? What have you learned over the last three days? A lot. My favorite thing has been the, the hand healing. And I think it's incredible that we all are built within us a healing modality. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And that's just so incredible that such a simple thing can make a, a huge difference in someone's life. Wow. And when we were doing that healing, I can feel the heat come through my body. We can, I, I, when I, they did it on me, I could literally smell smells from my past. Mm. I could feel so hot. Like I could genuinely feel the energy coming through me and entering them. And it was like, it was incredible. Wow. All right, you're 18. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in this room are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. When you look at this room, and as you, you said, future self, you're seeing a lot of future selves out here. What do you see for you? I see a lot of freedom. I mean, some of the people here are from across the country. I mean, that, that is so incredible that they have the freedom to just you know, go across the country because they want to. And, and the whole thing around reality creation that is so freeing to me. Why be a slave to your job or something when we can just create what's meant for us? And it's, it's honoring. Like, I feel so honored to be around these people because they're light years ahead of me too. I mean, they they know what they're doing in each separate aspect. And each person here is just so unique. They have their own unique spark, and it's incredible to be around. Been a good group, hasn't it? It's, it's an amazing group. So you know, one of the things that I've learned from Fred is when you go through an experience like that at your age, and you are, in essence, given this change, that it's to help others as well. You know you've got a special purpose. Yeah, I, I feel blessed within that and I do, I do feel like I have the opportunity to be somewhat of a voice to someone, at least one. <laughs> you sure will. You'll have a lifetime of it and to be able to create your own reality. Pretty well, cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you get this and you can live, as you said, so well, you can live freely. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. What an incredible story. Thanks. I appreciate you telling us. This is your start. <laughs> Thank you. Getting so it much. out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are just two of many, many stories from this weekend. There was just an amazing energy in that room all three days the bonding, the connecting, and even how this group is continuing to stay in touch is, is so powerfully moving to me. I'm just honored to have been able to witness it. We did capture it on video, and Fred will be releasing excerpts on his website going forward. So if you're not on his email list or his Telegram channel, you can find it all from his website, realitycreation.org. I'm Thomas Miller. Thank you for listening. I hope these stories empower you to create your own reality, starting right now. Till next time, enjoy the journey.